Hi, Dave Anderson from The Camera Company. I've been asked lately the best way to photograph the moon, so we're going to talk about that a little bit in this video. So one of the first things you want to do is check your calendar for the moon phases so you know when the moon's going to rise, when the moon's going to set, and pick out a place, a favorite spot where you want to go photograph that moon. That may include maybe the background of some buildings, or maybe you want to get far away from the light pollution of the city and find a spot out in the country. But once you've got all that scoped out, now we get down to the basics of photographing the moon. Let's talk a little bit about the equipment. First, any DSLR or any of your point and shoot cameras that have the ability to go out to about a 200 millimeter uh, focal length should work well. Second, make sure you've got a good steady tripod. And third, a cable release is always a good idea to have because it's going to help mitigate any movement when you take those uh, shots of the moon. So now we've covered the equipment, let's talk a little bit about photographing the moon. The moon is really very, very bright. Consider it's reflecting the sun. So most people make the mistake of overexposing and wonder why they just have this great big white blob. The other mistake people make is that they shoot it at too slow of a shutter speed. And consider that that moon is moving around the Earth at a pretty good speed. Even a 1 30th of a second is going to show a little bit of movement. So you want to keep your shutter speed up a little bit. Now, there's a rule that's been around for a while called the Looney 11 rule. And what we do is we use that rule as a good starting point. And what it says is that if you set your lens at f11, and then you pick a shutter speed that is 1 over whatever your ISO is. So for example, tonight I'm going to be shooting at f11 and an ISO of 200. So my shutter speed is going to be 1 200 or 1 250th of a second. Now, it's a great starting point, but you always have to fine tune it. So a couple thoughts are, one, bracket. So if you have f11 at, at ISO 200 at 1 250th of a second, what you may want to do is go one shutter speed slower, the one two hundred fiftieth of a second, and the one shutter speed faster. Therefore, you get yourself a, a few images to choose from. It never hurts to take more because you can throw them out, and it's not like you're having to go and process film. So again, the Looney 11 rule. That states that F11 and one over your ISO. I shot a few pictures the other night of the moon. I'm going to share one with you now as well as in a couple hours when the sun finally drops over the horizon and I can see the moon clearly, we will get you a couple shots of the moon. Okay, the sun finally set. I was able to get out and get a few pictures of the moon. What we have is a first quarter moon here. We're about seven days away from our next full moon. So I wanted to share this with you since our next full moon is actually going to be a lunar eclipse also. Now, a few things I want to clarify. Number one, Basically, any camera you can use to take a picture of the moon. That's not a problem. Number two, if you want to have the best possible results, you're going to want to use a lens that has approximately a 200 millimeter or greater focal length so you can bring that moon really in and up close. Now, when you're focusing on the moon, it's very, very far away. It's Most people would just put the uh, lens into manual focus and crank it all the way to the end. But beware that many lenses actually have the ability to focus past infinity. So what you're going to want to do is look at your lens, back it up to the infinity mark, take a couple test shots, make sure you've got good tack sharp focus, and that way you're not disappointed with your results. And finally, it's critical that you're able to make some manual adjustments. Therefore, you can apply the Looney 11 rule of using F11 and ISO and a shutter speed that is one over your chosen ISO. In this first shot that I have here, you can see that I used F11, ISO 200, and a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second. And we got a really great shot of the moon. On occasion, when I use a longer lens, I would like to have a faster shutter speed in order to mitigate any movement, especially since the moon is moving. I'm, you know, the earth is turning. They're working against each other. You want to take away as much as you can so that you get a nice clear shot. So what I've done is I bumped my ISO up to 500 in this next shot, and I used one 500th of a second. And you can see the results are very, very similar. 
Uh, the only thing is, is that I was able to, to increase my shutter speed. Okay, in this last image, I shot this one at ISO 500, shutter speed of 1 500th of a second, f11. And this was taken during our last full moon. I used a 270 millimeter lens on a tripod. And all the images you see here have been brought into Lightroom and then accordingly cropped to make them a little bit bigger in the frame. A little bit of practice, you'll be shooting some great pictures. Use the Looney 11 rule, it works. It's a great starting point. Okay, I hope this tip was helpful. If so, share some of your pictures of the moon with us. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you on the next video.